Hey everyone, Reaper here again with another comic book haul video. Um, this one comes maybe a couple weeks before I normally do videos. I do them every other month, but I wanted to do this one just a little bit early, uh, a little bit earlier um, than February because it's ready to go, and I just can't wait to show show the books. Okay. Um, for those that didn't know, I already put up the video announcing who won my giveaway. So, con big congrats uh, to the winners. Um, hope, uh, hope you enjoy the books. And let us get started. Let's not waste too much time with uh, me yapping about just whatever. Let's get to it. Let's see. The first book of this haul. Kamiko Primer. Number five. Now, just hold on for one second. Let me just make sure you can hear me. Okay, I'm back. Just wanted to make sure. Sometimes I make videos and then halfway through it, the sound cuts off. Really bothersome. But anyway, Kamiko Prime Number Five. Now, one of my earlier comic book hauls, I had purchased this book. Um, it wasn't, you know, it had some spine wear, and I was finally able to upgrade it. This is uh, the first appearance of Max the Hair. Uh, maybe I should put this in an affordable keys video coming up because it is fairly affordable uh, for those that are looking to get some key books, fill in some key books. Okay, here we go with the second book. King Size Annual Incredible Hulk number five. The significance of this one is that it is the second appearance of Groot. Now for a lot of us getting the first appearance of Groot, which is Tales to Astonish 13, which um, Deadpool 2323 Aaron was very, very lucky to have gotten. Very cool. Big congrats again uh, to you, Aaron. But for those of us that, you know, it's a, it's a hard book to find. You know, it's expensive, yes, but it's also one of those rarer books to get. But for those that cannot get the Tales to Astonish 13 or cannot get it right now, this is a good substitute for any of you Groot fans out there. So this is his second appearance. Okay, moving on. The Avengers number 59. This is the first appearance of the Yellow Jacket. Um, it's about probably a 4.0 copy. You know, I don't need a super high-grade copy of uh, the first appearance of the Yellow Jacket, but it's a book that I would like to have had in my collection, and I finally put it in. This is a really, uh, this is a high-grade copy. This one's really sweet. Now, some of these books you may have seen on my Instagram over the last few months, because as you know, I don't buy books like, my last haul was in December, right? It was the fantastic haul. Well, very rarely do I buy books in between hauls that will appear on the next haul. They usually show up in, later in the year. So you may have seen this earlier uh, around Halloween time, but it's a high-grade copy, and it's a sweet book. War is Hell number nine, the first appearance of death in the Marvel Universe. Pretty cool story, pretty jarring, um, but love it. I love the background. I love the red. I love red backgrounds. Love red backgrounds with yellow, all that good stuff. Really makes the covers pop. And this is, like I said, pretty high grade copy. Yes, I do collect high grade copies too, believe it or not. And I do have some high grade copies of my books. Um, here's another one. Fairly high-grade copy. Fairly high-grade copy. Um, but another one of those rarer books out there, one of those niche titles. And this is a book that's been on my list for a while, and I was able to find it. And Andoni, Herc's, Herc Collects Comics. You know full well I bought this book like last April because you were with me when I bought it, when we went to go visit my local comic book shop. Milk and Cheese number one, first printing. Um you know, they remind me of the Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Remember that cartoon show? I don't even know if it's still on. Um, I remember I caught an episode about a year or two ago, and it just, you know, it wasn't even funny at that point. But I remember when Aqua Teen first went on back 10 years ago, uh, more than 10 years ago, those were pretty funny. But this came out in 1992, and it sort of reminded me of uh, Aqua Teen, you know, food products, up to no good sort of thing. So milk and cheese, number one, finally glad to got that, get that one. Here's another one, um, probably a 4.0 copy, nothing to brag about, nothing to write home about, but a book that I wanted to get that I got fairly cheap, uh, Captain America 117, the first appearance of the Falcon, moving right along. Here I got a couple X-Men books, you know, I still try to collect my uh, X-Men Silver Run. I would like to complete it one day, but I move along very slowly with that, I'm not looking to... Uh, 
uh, finish that anytime soon. It's something that I like to savor over the years. So I managed to get an upgrade and a couple uh, new additions to the Uncanny X-Men family in, in, uh, collection. This is an upgrade. Uh, this is X-Men 57. This is the first appearance of Larry Trask. But, you know, big deal, right? But this is the second time the Sentinels show up. I mean, they showed up in issues 14, 15, and 16. They had that Sentinel arc, but they didn't return until years later with this book right here. Pretty cool story. Love the Sentinels. Love them. And here's a cover that I really, really like. This is a book I've been meaning to get for a while. I think I purchased it uh, about a month ago at a sale. Eh. Still have the price tag on it. I mean, sort of. I, I, yeah. Damn these freaking price tags. I hate it when they leave like that sticky residue on it. Why can't they just peel off? Ugh. Anyway, I gotta guess I put a new mylar on it. Um, here we go. X Men number forty. A pretty decent grade. I think about a 5.0, 5.5 copy. Um, I've always loved this cover. I always wanted to get uh, the Frankenstein monster. Uh, the mark of the monster, X Men versus Frankenstein. Boy, they really, they really didn't have any stories, did they? <laughs> they got to bring Frankenstein into it. But cool, cool enough. And I got two more X Men books to show you. And once again, let's see here. They got the price tags on, which I like to take off. They all came from the same uh, comic book store. They had a sale. Uh, what was it? middle of December, and it was like 25% off uh, these books, so I don't, there we go, X-Men number 39, the first time that they wore new costumes, they finally got out of those old costumes, a book I've wanted to ha get for years, never got it, finally was able to pull the trigger on it due to the sale, um, uh, probably not a very, uh, the next one, last X-Men book, not a very, uh, Probably like a 3.5 copy. Really nothing too to brag about. Maybe more of a placeholder because it's got a nasty crease over here, color breaking crease. But another book that I've always wanted, The First Appearance of the Mimic, X-Men number 19. Didn't spend that much on it, especially due to the sale. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with it right now. And if I could upgrade it uh, maybe down the line, it's not a terribly expensive book to upgrade. But when I feel like spending that money on the Mimic, I'll do so. But until that time, this is a worthy copy in my collection. Oh, actually, I do have one more X-Men book. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. And the last one, uh, from the 3.5 copy, uh, X-Men number 5. I believe this is the first appearance of Asteroid M. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but nice book to have. Um, I almost have the full 1 through 20 set, but there are still a few other books that I'm missing. Um, but all the major ones in my X-Men, my 60s X-Men run 1 through 20, I got already. Uh, but 5 was one of the bigger ones that I needed. Another big one I really need out of that run is number 10, the first, first Silver Age appearance of Kazar. But all the rest I have uh, that are reasonably big. Okay, the last two books. Um, this one was on my top 12 list to get for this year. I have to do some revamping to that top 12 list, but we'll talk about that in a later video. But this was one of the books that I wanted that was on the top 12 list, so here we go. Tales to Astonish 35. I have the Tales to Astonish 27, which is the first appearance of Hank Pym, but this is the first time he becomes the superhero and dons the costume of the Ant-Man. Really cool book. Um, probably a 4.0. Yeah, 4.0 copy. I'm happy with that. I see no reason to upgrade this anytime soon, especially when there are other books that I want to get. You know, look, I, you know, when it comes to collecting books, I'm going to get to the last one in a moment. When it comes to collecting books, I get what I can get. Some people go for, go for, go for the top, uh, top being high grade right from the start. And that's cool. I go for what I can get. And I think a lot of us do. When the time comes, when I'm happy with what I have, then I start looking at my books and I decide, okay, I need an upgrade here and I need an upgrade there. As I've been doing slowly over the last couple of years with my amazing Spider-Man 14 from last year, a couple of the books I showed in this particular haul, and there'll be more of those in the future. If I can upgrade some books, oh well, as long as I have them. It's, it's, for me, it's really important to have the books in my collection. And... 
when I'm done getting the books that I want to get, then decide, hmm, maybe I, now maybe it's the time to sell this one and upgrade it, as I'm trying to do this year with my Amazing Spider-Man 3. want to sell that one off and upgrade it to a better looking copy. Okay, are we ready for the last book of this haul? I think a lot of you already know what this is. Those of you that watched the recent uh, chat that I was in with Nick and Patrick uh, last week, I showed it off. If you saw my Instagram, it was on Instagram. I put it on our Andoni's group on Facebook. But it's, now it's time for it to make its official haul debut. This is, um, well, I don't, maybe I should do what Dr. Von Schiller did in his uh, recent sl first slab video. Time to, there go the panties. <laughs> he did it better than I could ever do it. And even as I did that, it's kind of creepy. <laughs> um, here we go. The Incredible Hulk, number one. Ta-da! Sorry for that cut. Um, remember I was saying how the sound cut off? Well, the sound cut off as I was uh, showing The Incredible Hulk. So let me show it again and say the things that I originally said in the last two minutes of that video. Um, a few of you in the community knew that I was getting this book. A few of you I entrusted to talk to, to get some advice about, um, about getting this book. Uh, more than a few of you, actually. Uh, guys like ETA Nick, uh, great legend, Luther Manning, Patrick, and Errol Molnar. You guys have been very instrumental to me. I've spoken to some of you at length more than others, but you guys have been very, very instrumental to me about this book and very supportive and uh, really put in perspective certain things for me. Uh, I know, Errol, you certainly have. Um, so all those talks that we've had, they're sinking in. But um, yeah, to have this, it does have some resto on it. It has, a, I know some of you don't like that, but this is not your book, is it? It has some color touch on the spine, a little bit of color touch. Right here has some glue because the original, this part right here was torn off and the guy, I guess, glued it back on. And there's a small tear seal right here that has some glue, which was stupid to even, I mean, it's not even a giant tear, to be quite honest. You could see though the glue. On it, um, yeah. So that's that. That's pretty much it. No trimming, no anything, and it presents very, very well. And it's still a desirable book. Um, to have a tier one Marvel silver is really more words than I can describe. Uh, tier one is two books, in my opinion. Some may disagree. Some may think it's three books, and, and that's debatable. But I think that the top two are. None other than Amazing Fantasy 15, which RB3 recently purchased. Congrats. And uh, Hudat got. So congrats to you, Hudat. Congrats, Russell. Very cool. It seems like this is the week of uh, big, uh, super uh, big boy books. Um, Marvel Silvers. Uh, the top tier ones. Um, but um, it's wonderful. It's, I can't describe how wonderful it is to have this book in my collection. And some of you out there do have it. Some of you have blue labels out there. I know a few of you for a fact have it. So, but look, we get what we can get. And this is truly wonderful to have. And it presents very, very well. It's not, you know, I've seen copies of books in general that are 1.8s, 1.5s that present very well. And then you see the copies that pretty much look really, really bad. But very happy to have this. The first appearance of the Hulk. And the first appearance of Thunderbolt Ross, too, who becomes the Red Hulk, right? Uh, truly a milestone in my collection. Uh, word, like I said, I say it over and over again. I know I'm blubbering about it, but yeah, this is uh, really something else. Really something else. Um, so before I go, once again, the guys I mentioned that I've talked to about this, that I've trusted to really talk to at length about about this kind of purchase, you guys have been very helpful to me. But the person that I want to thank the most, that has been the most influential uh, in my decision on getting this book, is my wife. She's been really terrific. She allowed me to bring this home. <laughs> Leave it at that. <laughs> but thank you so much for everything. Thank you for allowing me to have Incredible Hulk number one. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I probably won't have another haul for a few months. It's ready to go, but you won't see it for another few months. 
Um, but I have other videos all all ready to go over the next week or two. Um, so thank you for all your support. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for leaving comments. And thank you, most of all, for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, everyone.